You know, a lot of people do art, and um, but a lot of people don't create. There's a difference between making art and creating art. People who make art are people who look at a picture and they copy or duplicate. And that's okay, that's fun to do. But then what you want to do is you want to find out what your, um, what your techniques are, what, your, your, um, what you're trying to say with your art, um, and then go from there. So you have to create new images. You have to create your images. You can't, you can't du always just duplicate someone else's image. So that makes it, that's a person who creates art as opposed to a person who just paints art. So I think my artwork is, is fun and my images are fun. Um, and I think everyone's artwork is fun and their images are fun. But does it, does it you know, will, will artworks really stop a war? No. Will art, artwork feed people? Uh, no. So art is sort of like, it's something other than, it gives you an inward happiness. It doesn't necessarily, it's not going to be the cure cancer. You know. well, art is art is art and, and it's a lot of fun it's uh, something to do in between living and dying um, and it gives you if it gives you personally the artist some sort of enjoyment that's what it's all about anyway if you make money on it which is always fun to do if you make money on it that's like icing on the cake but really the cake is art really the cake is the search to try to find something creative to try to create something new in this world because um, that's the only way people get enjoyment by seeing new things if we all saw the same things constantly over and over and over again it'd be a very boring world so if you can create something or get some sort of images that people enjoy and can relate to that's even better it makes me happy it, it makes me it's, it's sort of like telling a joke and have people laugh it gives you a sense of wow isn't that fun because for that second or for that moment, you've actually meant something or, or touched something in another person, which is in itself hard to do. Um, some emotion or some sort of enjoyment, you've given uh, something to another person that made them feel happy or maybe, maybe they didn't like it. You know, as long as they get, you get some sort of response. So if you can get some sort of response with your artwork, positive or negative, that's great as long as it causes some sort of response. My most important artistic tool is, uh, I guess it'd be drawing pen and ink and pencil. It's more, more direct, um, more satisfying in that it's an instant gratification. You don't have to struggle as much as you do when you, when you paint. Because when you paint, you have to figure out colors, you have to figure out balance, and, when you're drawing, especially when I draw, because I just sit down and draw what's ever in my head, um, I can go to Tim land, and in Tim world, everything is great, and I have a wonderful time. So it's, it's a little bit different than painting. Painting, I, most of the times, I draw something out first, and I think about it um, a lot more than when I just spontaneously draw. But I can't spontaneously paint, but you never know what's going to happen. My drawings, people say, uh, look sort of like um, Oh boy, a little bit like, uh, who do they look like? Escher maybe, but in that they're a puzzle, but they don't look like his refinement. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, Frank Stella right now is sort of uh, painting when I'm drawing type stuff. He's, he's taken shapes and he's made them real large. So Frank Stella has got into making things that are, he went from being real flat to his stuff's are cutouts now all pasted together so they gives, makes them look a little more three-dimensional. So I guess right now I'd have to see Frank Stella. My mentor, the first person I really noticed um, as, when I became at least you know, 16 or 17 was Paul Clay, uh, Paul Klee, K-L-E-E. -E. And there was something about his art, it was very primitive and it was very childlike and it just looked like a lot of fun. So I related to that. and. I, I uh, enjoyed his images and his colors, so that's what I always like uh, in my paintings, a lot of color. The brighter the color, the better it is. I teach, and I always tell my students the one of the most important things you learn about painting is when to stop. 
So if you've got something you really like, don't think, oh, I can do one more, one more stroke on it and make it look better. Don't do it. That one stroke might not make it look better. Then you're going to fight to get back to where you were. It's, it's hard to tell when a painting's finished, uh, there's, but you know it. There's a lot, a lot of artwork I have at my home that makes me happy. Ah! Ah! Oh. Right? The dinosaur? Oh, hello, Jane. What are you Hi, doing over there, huh, Jane? That's cool. He's cool. Whoops. Nice. Sand time. He got hit the head, poor guy. And then I got a bunch of these smaller ones right here. Um, so, I, a lot of my um, drawings, and a lot of my drawings aren't even shown because I have so many of them and there's some of my paintings. I like them. I like some of my paintings because of the idea that came out. I, I reached, I had a vision and I, and I got pretty close to reaching it. I don't know as an artist is if you ever completely reach your vision that you're trying to express, but you try. You get, if you get close, then that's great. I'm doing a series of uh, superheroes on vacation. And it's, the idea is, if, if you were a superhero, where would you go to have fun? You know, you can't do it here on Earth because people think that you're a hero. So you have to go to another planet to drink, or to smoke, or to party, or to gamble, or to do whatever superheroes would do that they couldn't do in public. So I think my Superheroes on Vacation series right now, I'm having a lot of fun with, and people are responding to them. different shows like we did a couple this weekend and selling art together and setting up and doing all of that. He's going to be doing some shows in Ebor and another one he'll be doing um, through the Hyde Park Art Studio. Hyde Park Art Show. Okay, and there should be, you know, thousands of people there. I'm going to go there and uh, draw at the table, do live drawings and sell some of my drawings. It was a success for me because I had a lot of fun. I had a, I had a ball. Uh, financially, was it a success? Well, no. But again, um, you know, you you show your artwork for ego, for sure, to say, hey, look what I can do, or look at my stuff, or do you like my stuff, that type of thing. But it's good if you can sell your stuff too. But as far as um, having been a success, it was a success for me because I had so much fun, and I saw so many old friends came by, and. You know, it was a beautiful day. Both days were really, both, all three days were really pretty days. And it's always fun to get in a, in a crowd and have people look at your stuff and, and try to hear what they're saying. Of course, I had one time, one time, my favorite is this guy, I was at the show and this guy came by and he said, he said, wow, I heard him say, wow, on the outside, I was sitting inside the tent, I heard him go, wow, look at that, that's great. And he <laughs> And he came in, and I'm going, yeah, okay, he likes my art. He picks up a piece, goes, wow, where did you get this? And I said, I was getting ready to tell him, and he said, no, where did you get the frame? <laughs> you know, how about the art in the frame? The frame I bought at the garage sale. So I told him, get out of here, you know, okay, thanks a lot. I really, I really appreciate that. So it's, <laughs> sometimes you get those sort of things, and it makes you laugh. And I don't know what you can do about it. Sometimes it's hard to uh, inform the public how to look at art or how to appreciate art. If they don't, especially if they don't do art. If they, if they aren't into the arts and they're in more into sports, sports is okay, it's fun, but it's not as fun as art. I really didn't have a good time in the Marine Corps. I didn't really like the service and they didn't like me. So I really don't, um, I try not to do much with showing the military. If I did, I did one time though paint like on my um, on my cover. I lost my little Marine Corps eagle on the on the world co on my cover, and we had junk on the bunk that day. I uh, like this Brigadier General was going to come in, so I, I drew a little little world with a marker. I drew a little world and put a little chicken on top of it, and put my cap out. Well, wouldn't you know? He, he walks through all these bunks, and I, someone must have told him. I have no idea. He stopped at my bunk and picked up that cap and saw the chicken on top of the world. And he said, what is this Marine? And you know, so that's, that wasn't a good experience right there. But I, I just have never figured out why he stopped at my bunk and looked at my cap. You know, I just looked like any other jarhead, I thought. He didn't appreciate it. And that's when I figured I probably should try to get out of the service before they call.
call me up and put me in the regulars and send me to Vietnam where I did not want to go. It's a constant aspect of his life. It is what keeps him going. He's very, very active, and if he's not doing his art, he gets real nervous. You know, like he gets real jumpy. His art calms him down. He has to do it constantly. When he comes home, he sits in his chair and he starts doing drawings. He does drawings for hours. All weekend, that's what he does. And then the drawings inspire him to do different paintings. Like this painting here began as a drawing and then became a t-shirt and now it's a painting. But um, he's amazing the way he does his art. You know, I, I watch what he's doing, I'll say, wow, I really like that. Some things he does I don't like at all. And I'll say, I hate that. Other things I'll say, stop immediately. It's perfect. Don't do another thing. So I'm constantly watching what he's doing and appreciating it, and I'm very supportive, as he is of me also. I love what he's doing all the time. It, to me, everything he does is a work in progress. It's so interesting, and I see things in his art that he's been through in his life. He'll see something or read something in science or history, and I'll see that come out. Or I'll see an experience he's had with his father or his brothers or his mother, and that will come out. Sometimes even a discussion that he and I have had, and that will come out in his art. And I can interpret that and see it, and I might say to him, wow, this reminds me of the day we did thus and so, or something that you said. And he'll say, really? I didn't think so. so. Well, a friend of mine came to me and said, uh, he was the director, and he asked me to, uh, would I like to be in a movie? And I said, oh yeah, be in a movie, that sounds like fun. So uh, he, he said there's a couple of uh, talking parts in the movie, and I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. I probably won't do well, but I'll give it a shot. And he put me as a director, directed a movie that he was directing, which was really fun. And it was fun seeing the background of what people were doing, how they put a movie together. All, and you know, you just don't think there's a lot of people that are, that are behind the camera making, the, making it really happen. And to see all that come together was, was a lot of fun. The one word he had to say was, cut. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that, that was right, cut. Yeah, right, well, you know, that's her that opinion. That was hard I to remember. Yeah, I couldn't quite get cut. I was going, cut, or cut. No, you know, so. it, he, he did really well. It, it, was, it was funny. Okay, so. guys, that's a cut and a, and a wrap. Guys. Tim definitely should stay painting and drawing rather than acting is the most important aspect of his life. That's what he does best. You're, you're putting yourself out there. Are people going to like what I'm doing? Um, and you hope they like what you're doing, but if they don't like what you're doing, you go, okay, well, that's all right. At least they got a response. And then you, you find out, well, what don't they like about it? And if, and if that has some validity to it, you go, okay, then I understand what you're saying. I'll change that or I'll try something different. So every time you put your, every time you do art or do anything creative, you put yourself out there. And if you can put yourself out there and still have enough, um, you can't be hurt by people's criticism or even take too much praise too much into yourself because then you've got to get a big head and you get a big ego. But just understand that they're just giving their view of what you're trying to do because in reality they don't know what you're trying to do. You hardly as an artist know what you're trying to do. You're searching. Do something different. You're trying to represent some style and some emotions, some feeling that you want other people to understand. You're trying to touch people again. You're trying to touch people. And you're trying to, instead of doing using words, or using music, or using dance, you're using color, you're using shape, and you're using form. So all this all adds up to fun. That's why I do all this, because it's fun. It's bringing people together. It's trying to get the, the public to see art. And it's also so much fun to me. This is how I have my fun. That's our main drive in life, is to have fun. If you can't. <laughs>